Hello again. After a brief detour to 5.5, we are back on 5.6 and another very important component of 5.6 that is interlaboratory comparison 5.6.3. This talks about testing samples from outside of your laboratory to ensure your proficiency. So, this is there are multiple subheadings under that and we will discuss this in two videos. In the first videos, we will just talk about a very specific component and this component is what I would like to call consensus based metrics SDI and CVI that is comparing yourself to your peers and how we have already talked in length in many of the videos about peer group and in this video we will just go in a little in depth and understand what exactly the peer group offers. So, how do inter lab comparisons peer groups work? Your laboratory enrolls in the inter laboratory program offered by your QC manufacturer. Your laboratory along with other laboratories analyze the same lot number of control materials for a month. Your laboratory submits your QC results through the QC data management program to a central facility. The central facility examines the data for outliers and calculates the means and standard deviation for the peer group and all lab groups. So, there are two kinds of calculations, we will see that shortly and the SDI and CVI for your laboratories. We will also see these numbers SDI and CVIs and your laboratory receives a report indicating your analytical performance. This is the ideal situation that you do your peer group enrollment along with your uh, subscription to the IQC program you also have your peer group enrollment uh, simultaneously. I will tell you about a few alternatives in the uh, towards the end of this video which also you can do. So, this is what we just talked about right now this is your enrollment happens and what you do is you have your uh, quality control material you analyze it for a month and you feed the data to the central facility who will in turn analyze it and remove the outliers calculate SDI and CVI and send you the report. This is the ideal scenario for a peer group report happening and how do you enroll is the question. Several IQC providers make available the ILC program. So, include that as one of your requirements. Check with your IQC provided for such programs work that into the contract very important you have to work it into the contract while you are signing up with them and peer group comparison data may be considered as the most robust version of inter laboratory comparisons because we already saw it in one of the earlier videos the number of data points that were almost like 20,000 data points and that becomes a very very strong kind of a comparator for you to compare with and there are many ways of comparing comparing within your method and within your method and equipment and with all method. So, peer word meaning of peer is somebody who is doing the exactly the same thing as you are doing. So, there will be generally the two kinds of comparisons will be given in the peer group reports. One is compared to all other laboratories that use the same or similar equipment and method. So, if this is your lab CV you are comparing your labs performance with every other lab A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, everyone is putting in their reports and you get a comparison your CVs this is called the peer CV. But along with that these programs also offer you another kind of comparison where all in equipment or method used by the participating laboratory to measure that analytes. Maybe you are giving glucose your method is hexokinase and you have whatever equipment with you and so everybody who is using similar equipment and method will be your scenario 1, scenario 2 is whoever is doing glucose estimation will be compared and that will be your second scenario. So, this is your lab peer group and there are other peer groups within that. So, peer group A, B, C, D whereas here it is your lab along with other things. So, the two kinds of comparisons you get in your reports and this is there are two statistics that we talked about SDI and CVI. These are the two consensus based metrics that the peer group data gives you on a monthly basis. SDI is your result minus the peer group mean or your expected result divided by the groups standard deviation. So, that is a calculation. This is also present in the QC soft and LJ graph module. So, if you have your peer group numbers if you put that in even if you do not get your enrollment and your SDI calculated by the peer group 
provider, you still have a chance to find out what your SDI and CVI are. So, SDI is your result minus expected result divided by the group's SD. So, if suppose there are so many people, there are like 30 people inside here and everybody is giving in a report. Your report is here at your reporting an 87 when the peer group mean is 75. So, th this is how you calculate the SDI is your result, let us say it is 87 minus 75 divided by the standard deviation here is 5. So, that will be your standard deviation index. And what does the standard deviation index tell you? It is a peer based measure for inaccuracy or accuracy. It is a measure of bias, describes how far our mean is from the peer or from other lab or lab method. That is also simultaneously made available. I just showed you the peer diagram. Also, for all other means together also how much you are deviating that will also be said in your report. It has a direction. It can be plus or minus. If you look at the thing, this was going in the plus direction. It can be in the minus direction also. In whichever direction it is going, ideally it should be less than 2. In whichever direction, it more than 2 indicates some inaccuracy error, a build up of bias. Even after 1, you want to be cautious about it. It should be ideally the if you have no deviation, it should be 0. And if if your mean is the same as a peer group mean that it should be 0, but if it is deviating on either side that shows that some error is there. At some point you would want to take note of it. You will we'll talk about it in the next slides. Now, let us look at the next statistic CVI which is a check of precision. It is also called the full form of CVI is coefficient of variation index. So, CVI calculation is again a simple statistic labs monthly CV divided by peer monthly CV. While you look at that itself is very evident that your CVI should be less than 1 and why is that so? Because your lab's monthly CV is your intermediate. I hope you remember the discussion on intermediate precision and reproducibility. So, your monthly CV is your intermediate precision. We are only capturing so many variables and whereas your monthly peers monthly CV is your reproducibility. The same sample is getting analyzed in so many different laboratories. So, naturally the variables there will be more. So, if your CVI is more than 1 that is a concern because you cannot have within a lab more dispersion than in a group of laboratories. So, CVI is 1.5 to 2, your lab is 50 to 100 percent less precise than its peer group usually requiring investigation. Even after 1, you should start investigating if the CVI is going above 1. So, again just to compare the two SDI and CVI, it is SDI is a peer based measure for, for bias, CVI is a peer based measure for imprecision. SDI describes how far our mean is from the peer or from all labs mean and comparison of our labs CV or precision to all the peer labs CV. SDI has direction plus or minus and again the acceptability is something that you need to concern yourself with. Any SDI more than 2 or greater deserves some special concern regardless of what the test is. Any test whose average over a period of time is SDI 1 or greater in one given direction or greater deserves some special attention because your method shows a systematic difference from the group. It is going on more than one around one for a long time that needs investigation. In the future, this bias might lead to unacceptable results. Ideally, about the CVI, ideally the CVI should be less than 1 that we already saw since your values are from a single lab while your peer CV is from several laboratories. Smaller the number, higher the precision of your lab. If CVI is 1.5 to 2, your lab is 50 to 100 percent less precise than the other from your peer. So, CVI more than 2 is not acceptable. And so, these are some examples of some peer group reports so that you can have an idea about it happens. So, this is some equipment using first party controls. It is from a Beckman Coulter control on a Beckman Coulter machine and this is how the SDI and CVI are reported. Therefore, all the parameters RBCs, hemoglobin, HCT, MCV. So, both SDI and CVI are given. So, this is if you feed in your data on a daily basis and you send it to the provider and you will get this kind of a report at the end of the month. And Another uh, example is a third party control while you have enrolled. This is what why I said I will talk to a little more about enrolling and not enrolling. This is a third party control that you have enrolled in you. You get your reports at the end of the month. So, one of the parameters alkaline phosphatase is uh, SDI is more than acceptable. Uh, 
2.5 in your peer and 1.89 in your method and so uh, because with the method you have more it's too many laboratories you look at the data points in your uh, with your method you have got 4000 data points in your peer you have 4500 data points in your method you have 17000 data points and there are far too many people signing in there and too many methods so it you would be well advised to look at your peer and get your accuracy idea from your peer. So in your peer it is going up to 2.5 so it is flagged. This is how you look at your SDI and CVI reports. So this is you are enrolled in a peer group program. So another option is that if the peer group reports sometimes you know this is again depend variable you can ask provider QC provider to give you the peer group report even if you have not enrolled directly with them. So, it is made available on your request because that is some commitment that they take and so if you get the reports like you can actually do you calculate your SDI and CVI yourself because what they do is they give you the mean this is your peer group mean for the month and this is your cumulative your peer group mean your standard deviation your CVs you also know your own uh, statistics within the lab you can calculate it yourself. So, these are made available as worldwide report. This is not promoting anyone, but I am just saying this is also available, made available through some of the uh, IQC programs. So, please look into these options while you are signing up for your IQC program. And that is it. Thank you.